Following months of protests in Venezuela, the situation dramatically escalated on June 28th when dissident members of the government attacked two state institutions. More precisely, a helicopter piloted by a former police intelligence officer opened fire with small arms on the office of the Interior Ministry and then flew to the Supreme Court where it dropped grenades. The helicopter pilot has been identified as Oscar Perez who is a former captain in Venezuela's intelligence and investigative body. Although no injuries were reported and the attack was not part of a coordinated coup, the incident does highlight the disintegration of the government. So, to shed light on this matter, in this report we will go over the political turmoil in Venezuela. My name is Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Decades of overspending and currency manipulation has dramatically damaged Venezuela's economy. The last three years have been particularly desperate. In 2016, inflation reached 800%, while the overall economy shrank by 18%. At the same time, crime rates increased throughout the country. In 2016 alone, more than 28,000 homicides were reported. At the backdrop of the economic and social depression, large-scale anti-government protests consistently erupted in the streets of the capital. Meanwhile, to deal with the turmoil, the government responded with excessive force. Since April 2017, more than 80 people lost their lives during the clashes with law enforcement agencies. As social unrest and hyperinflation endured, President Maduro's approval ratings plummeted below 20%. It is apparent that Maduro is unlikely to secure the presidency in the 2018 elections. For the president, losing the upcoming elections greatly increases the likelihood of imprisonment on human rights violations or extraction to the United States on criminal charges. Thus, in May 2017, to maintain control over the situation, Maduro and his inner circle, which includes politician Cabello and Vice President El Saimi, called for a constitutional assembly to redesign the constitution. The idea was to rewrite the electoral law and thereby delay the next presidential elections. However, the proposal was ill-received by many members of the ruling party. As such, dissident members of the United Socialist Party of Venezuela formed a new faction, which was led by the chief prosecutor Ortega and to a smaller extent by the former chief of intelligence service Rodriguez. So in addition to the economic depression, large-scale protests and international sanctions, members of the ruling political party turned against one another. In early June 2017, Ortega filed a motion at the Supreme Court and denounced Maduro's electoral reforms as unconstitutional. Ortega and Rodriguez had already previously opposed Maduro's legal and civil proposals. For instance, in March 2017, the chief prosecutor blocked the president's attempt to dissolve the National Assembly. In another example, Ortega prevented Maduro from using the military courts for the legal proceedings of civilian protesters. However, Ortega's recent legal motion was a turning point as she was joined by district attorneys, military officers, law enforcement officials and former cabinet ministers. It became apparent that the loyalties of the state agencies and figures were not set in stone and that besides foreign and domestic opposition, Maduro faced opposition within the ruling party. The disintegration of the government is a scenario that Maduro had actually anticipated. This is evident from his surveillance efforts and militia reforms. For example, as a precaution, the Bolivarian intelligence service began monitoring civilian activists in early 2017. And in addition to the increased surveillance, Maduro began developing a new militia, which is still an ongoing process. 
the Bolivar Chavez Battle Units or UBCH is being reformed into a militia that reports directly to the president. Maduro's new militia is set to become a rival of the Colectivos militia which is led by Cabello who has a complicated history with Maduro. Ultimately though, both militias are meant to break apart opposition protesters and prevent a civilian uprising. The situation is further complicated by the involvement of the Directorate General of Military Counterintelligence, which has close ties to Cuba and is tasked with the surveillance of medium-ranking officers in the Venezuelan armed forces in order to minimize the risk of a military coup. Essentially, Venezuela's military structure is as confusing as its economy and Maduro relies on the system to maintain control over the situation. This plan of action, however, is contested by the Ortega faction who argue that the government cannot continue to use excessive force and manipulate the electoral system to its benefit. In short, the chief prosecutor believes that the president's approach is unsustainable and that his failure will bring down all the members of the ruling party. Therefore, to ensure their own survival, the Ortega faction seeks to rid the ruling party of a leader that is unlikely to be re-elected. It is speculated that Ortega is exploring ways to use Article 350 of the Constitution to legally remove Maduro from office. The article in question states that Venezuela's republican values should be protected against any government that disregards them. Basically, it allows the military and the civilian population to commit acts of insubordination under certain circumstances. The fact that the helicopter crew held a banner with the caption Article 350 is perceived by Maduro loyalists as proof of Ortega's involvement in the recent attack. This claim, however, is fiercely denied by Ortega, but regardless of the truth, the incident presented an opportunity for Maduro to eliminate members of the Ortega faction. As such, immediately following the incident, the Supreme Court issued a ruling that removed Ortega from her post. Furthermore, the government also claims that Rodriguez conspired with the helicopter crew. In the coming days, more party members could be apprehended as the president is likely to enforce even more excessive crackdowns on political dissidents. However, despite the claims and allegations, there is no evidence that links the incident to the Ortega faction, just as there is no evidence of CIA involvement or that this was a false flag by Maduro. As things stand now, it appears that the helicopter crew were members of the ruling party's dissident faction but acted on their own and sought to inspire a popular uprising against Maduro. Currently, the president and his inner circle have enough control to survive another day and proceed with the constitutional changes. Ultimately though, delaying the elections and the use of excessive force will not resolve the country's deep-rooted issues. By the end of 2017, inflation is expected to increase by another 700%. As such, Maduro's increasing authoritarian decisions will only further split the elite. At the backdrop of these events, Venezuela's Ministry of Defense, which is led by General Lopez, is set to become a central figure in the political intrigue. As the ruling elite continues to fall apart and protests become more violent, Lopez will eventually have to reconsider the loyalty of the armed forces and choose between the power brokers of Venezuela. This was a Caspian report by me, Shirvan. Special thanks to our contributors on Patreon whose support made this report possible. And if you want to help our channel grow, please check out our fundraising page on patreon.com slash caspianreport. For now, thank you for your time and sarol.